I was trying to talk to somebody about you and your brother's views, and when I was doing it, it was difficult really not to avoid occasionally smiling at the ways in which <laughs> to, to, to talk about the contradictions. When I was talking to him, and I was talking about the family, and I was talking about divorce, and I was talking about abortion, and I was talking about homosexuality. Do you recognize an affinity in the in the, in the certainties that you both espouse, do you recognize a, a complementary intolerance of ambiguity? Yes, I do. Um, because I've noticed that uh, on things where we actually do agree, uh, without checking with each other, I sometimes find that we often find the same kinds of politician um, repulsive, for example. Often for slightly different reasons, but that the, there's the same feeling, how can anyone look at this guy, say it's Bill Clinton, um, without realizing you're dealing with this sort of dangerous phony, sort of hopeless case of narcissism, and why, is, why would anyone volunteer to help, be proud to help, to pump up this already bloated ego? What, what's going on here? Some kind of appalling masochism. I mean, yeah, we... I, I never I didn't know what he thought about it until I published my own stuff, or maybe vice versa. He's good on things like that, um, as he is, for example, on um, the wretched church of which he's a member. I mean, he understands as much and as easily as I do that you know, Rowan Williams <laughs> just does this perfect impersonation of a Welsh sheep trapped bleating on some hillside in the rain. And... It's more of a tragedy to him than it is to me. Uh, but you can't miss a thing like that. Um, and he wouldn't be him if he didn't. I mean, it's very typical of him. It's his form of Trotskyism, if you like. He can only be a member of the Church of England on the, on the on condition that he's a member of the most extreme, isolated, derided opposition group within it. Absolutely. Oh, last. But I'd rather be a Trotskyist, frankly. But I don't know. <laughs> with all the hazards. If I say the name Horace Mann, you're mm. probably going to know that I'm going to use that quotation from him, which he said, until you've done something for humanity, you should be ashamed to die. I think in your, that you say that's a pretty tall order. Would, yes. you, would, you allow, would you allow that of yourself? Would you like to feel that that is true to an extent? No, I can't really say that, I don't think. Uh, but I'm hoping to, if this wouldn't seem like a rather uh, melancholy coda. Because, um, as you know, I have a malignancy in my chest. Quite a lot of it now, of my chest. And um, the possible treatments for this uh, remarkable. I mean, I live in a revolutionary age to have cancer, as it turns out. And there are experiments that are being conducted, and I've volunteered to take part in two or three of them. And there may be a couple more where I could be a uh, guinea pig. Um, it's also a rather sad time to have cancer, as well as an inspiring one, because I don't think this used to be the case with people. They, they, would, they would die knowing there was a treatment that was just out of their reach. That, that will probably happen to me. I, there was tantalizing me near, and there were some so tantalizing near that they might work if I can hold on long enough. Now, plainly, I'm doing this for myself. I want to hang on. And, uh, but I also do feel that I'm willing to go to places I didn't need to go to have my gene sequenced, for example, and my genome analyzed, and to have some tests conducted that they don't hold out any prospect of success for, but that might benefit other people. And Horace Mann was in my mind when I thought about doing that. I thought, you probably need to be nearer death to be deciding, well, what, how are you going to pass the test? This will be what I hope to contribute. Or bequeath, if you like. Um, and it's a lot better than the other offers I had, which were to go to prayer breakfasts in my own honor. I can't see you. Which I didn't think would meet the test either way. In fact, would rather, rather negate the idea. Christians have been rather nice to you, haven't they, when you consider the assault that you made 
Oh, you've been making a bond them recently. They're all praying for you, aren't One they? One of them in particular. Well, not all Christians are praying for my recovery, I should add. Oh, they're... They somehow see this uh, as a divine... Well, no, I mean, I mean by that to say there are some who pray for me to die horribly uh, in order to set an example to other backsliders, and not only to die horribly, but then to be reborn and then never to die, but to live forever in, in agony. There's, there's that tendency, faction. Um, and then there are those who say they're praying for me, and it, only after a while, after I got a lot of these messages, so I start writing back saying, do you mind if I ask... When you say you're praying for me, praying for what? And many of them were honest and wrote back saying, praying for you to become someone who accepts Jesus as his personal savior. Not for me to get better. Um, or to get better plus that, but not only that. Well, it, I thought it was nice of them to clarify. But one Christian in particular very, has become very important to me and is, I think, a very exemplary person. Um, you may have heard of him. He's called Francis Collins. Dr. Francis Collins, well, he's the head of the National Institute of Health and the National Cancer Institute. And, and he is the man who was given the job in um, the 90s of completing the Human Genome Project and brought it in complete, uh, ahead of time and under budget in the early years of the Clinton administration. A gigantic contribution to medicine as well as to our understanding of what we have in common with other animals, um, and is the final blow to all those who doubt that we are evolved rather than created. Um, and Francis is a believing Christian of a C.S. Lewis kind, I would say. And he's taken a strong personal interest in me and, and introduced me to doctors who um, can help me, if I want to think of it like that, help other people by doing new pathway treatments, or help myself perhaps as well, on the off, on the off chance. So that, that's a rather nice uh, symbiosis. Have you, to quotation that you use at the beginning of your book, The Hamlet, have you, you always made me laugh, your, uh, your tirade, your, your invective, your name calling, apart from all the other things about your writing that I admire, but it was often the laughter. Have you, um, have you lost all your mirth? No. I have foregone all custom of exercise, but that was a long time ago. Never could quite discipline myself in that way. No, I hope I don't seem uh, mirthless in the least. I, I wouldn't say I've found any more funny sides to dwell on than I had before. But um, certain jokes at the expense of the species, you know, about being born into a losing struggle, um, being created sick and then ordered by God to be well, and all of this, do uh, seem even more pertinent um, when you have to live with the thought every day that it could be your last one. 